In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are well. Saturday, the 14th day of May, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2022. We are continuing with the gift of the Spirit. And today... We, yesterday we, we, we picked up at um, hospitality. Today, I mean, we ended up at hospitality. Today we pick up at knowledge. This is the gift of someone who actively pursues knowledge of the Bible. This person may also enjoy analyzing biblical data. These are people who take time to study the Bible, to read, read literally about the Word of God, analyzing biblical data. This is a gift of knowledge. Now, this is with a few people, and I want to add it to that. Leadership, another gift. This aptitude marks a person who is able to stand before a church to direct the body with care and attention and to motivate them towards achieving the goals of the church. Now this gift and the gift of administration, they go together. Again, not all preachers are leaders, not all. And the day we will understand some of these small pieces of information and knowledge, we will be happy. Because maybe we will stop inner fighting. Maybe we will stop a lot of pettiness and mediocrity. Maybe just maybe we will stop unhealthy competition in places where it is not desired, let alone needed. Prophecy. Now before prophecy, we, we go to mercy. This is the defining trait of a person with great sensitivity for those who are suffering. It manifests itself in offering compassion and encouragement and in a love for giving practical help to someone in need, somebody who can go out of themselves to make another person feel valued, feel loved, feel appreciated. Prophecy. The ability to speak the message of God to others. Speaking for God. Not speaking about God. And when we speak for God, we speak the truth of God to others. With this gift... We cannot make the mistake that Job did in the Bible. Misrepresenting the thoughts of God. Misrepresenting the truth of God to the extent that God had to appear in person. In chapter 38, 39, 40, and 41... God is asking questions. And when Job realized that he has gotten lost, listen to what he said. This is in um, chapter 42. I want to read for you because I am a good man. Um, yes, the book of Job is here. Chapter 42. Then 
Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be heeded. I have dealt with great things that I do not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I cannot know. I had heard of you by the word of mouth, but now my eye has seen you. Now my eye has seen you. In chapter 19, remember what he said? I know that my Redeemer lives and that one day I'll see him with my own eyes. My own eyes will see the Lord. Now he has seen him. He is giving this testimony. He is saying that I misrepresented your thoughts and your truth. Men and women with the gift of prophecy, courageously and heroically represent the thoughts of God, the truth of God, and they teach to the others. Now, this is one of the very rare gifts with believers. Why? Because it calls for more than we can give. Men of courage who can speak the truth even when it pains. Men and women of faith who can speak the truth of God even when it is injurious to the leaders and the, the, the powers that be. But they will stand and prophetically say, this is wrong. And if you do this, you will get annihilated. This is wrong. This is wrong. It is called the gift of prophecy the gift of serving a talent for identifying tasks needed for the church and using available resources to get the job done that is called the gift of serving the other gift controversial though is the gift of speaking in tongues. I know I have said before that not everybody can speak in tongues. And if somebody is speaking in tongues, please stop fighting them. They have a gift that you do not have. It doesn't matter the parameters you use to judge their speaking in tongues. Today I want someone to know that speaking in tongues is a gift possessed by some people and not others. This is the supernatural ability to speak in another language. Another language. And one that has not been learnt. One that has not been learnt. It is not for everyone. Some will not have this gift. Teaching. The skill to teach from the Bible and communicate it effectively for the understanding and spiritual gift of others, teaching others. Some of us have this gift to teach. It is not the gift that is, that, that is possessed by everyone. So if you struggle to put points across for people to understand, maybe this gift is not given to you. If you fight someone else teaching so well, don't fight them. It is a gift given to them and you do not have it. Respect that gift. Don't see the person using the gift. See for whom the gift is used. 
Jesus Christ. We said that these are gateways of knowing Christ more. And when we do not have it, we pray for it. When we do not have it, and my neighbor has it, it means God has given them maybe mine on the way. Wisdom. The gift of being able to sort through facts and data to discover what needs to be done for the church. That is the gift. The gift of wisdom. Again, allow me to say that uh, not everyone has this gift. The moment we understand some of these facts, I tell you, we will never fight again. We will only know that we are gifted differently. Some in serving, others in prophecy, others in mercy, others in leadership, others in knowledge, others in hospitality, others in helping, others in healing, others in giving, others in faith, others in exaltation, others in evangelism, others in discernment, others as apostles, and others as administrators. And we said, if we do not have a certain gift, then I will, I will pray for it. It is him who is a giver of gifts. And when one has a gift, they have it. There is nothing I can do if my brother is an apostle or has the gift of evangelism or, or exhortation and I don't have. Or my brother has a gift of administration and I do not have. I will thank God for what they have. And I thank God for what he has given me. And both of us use our gifts to build the church. To glorify the name of God. These gifts are not for competition. These gifts should not be used to dehumanize others. If you have a certain gift, it is not something to brag about. It is something that you carry with a lot of humility. The piety with which you discharge your duties as an administrator or an apostle just communicates who it is you are doing on behalf. That marks the difference between the gift, the recipient, and the giver. Once we put that clear demarcation, we will stop fighting. And today I can tell you as your priest and servant, go through our churches across the globe. Find out why people fight. You will come up with one conclusion. People fight because there is a lot of ignorance. Because we didn't know that some of us can do this and others cannot completely. Not because they are idiots, but because they are gifted differently. That one person who cannot do administration could be the best in prophecy and discernment. And remember again, we may be having a gift that we have not identified. Next week we'll be looking at that aspect. How to identify the gift that I have. Allow me to stop there. And remind you that tomorrow we will be able to gather together and we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Together we congregate at 8 a.m. East African time. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Saturday.